In this video, I'm going to step you through a command that I have found to be something that has truly uh, helped me become so much more efficient when using the Linux command line. Specifically, it's a combination of Control X and Control E. Now, here I am here sitting in the terminal, and if I bring up the last command I have, you can see that what I'm doing here is doing a recursive grep, if we'll just back up here, looking for the text string Samba in any file from the local directory downwards, but specifically looking in ASCII doc files. And that's because we're only including files that have the .adoc extension. Now, if I say I wanted to change that to be something like, maybe I wanted to look for, I'm actually stuck thinking of an example. What would something be? What would something be? Technical documentation. Now, let's just say Windows, right? Let's not think too deeply on this. Right, you can see here, oh, allowing for the massive size of text there. You can see here that if I clear the screen, go back to that command, what I, what I did was I sort of stepped back through the command. And then I edited it there, typed in Windows, and ran the command. Now that might seem okay, and it kind of might be okay for a small example like this. But if you had a particularly large example, maybe you had a, a pretty notable bash one-liner where you were piping the results of one command to another, to another, to another, and so on, that would get very messy very quickly. So what you can do instead is type Control x Control e and you'll note allowing for a slightly broken Vim configuration on my part, you can see here that it opens up the command in Vim, which is my editor. Now I want to stress it won't necessarily open it up in Vim for you. It's whatever you have your editor environment variable set to, it will open it up in that for you. So that could be um, leafpad, gedit, some other text editor, nano, pico, emacs, whatever. You know, whatever you've got set, it'll open it up there for you. Now, the reason why I personally think this is a brilliant bit of functionality is because now you have the functionality of your editor to move around. So just using the case of Vim, so work with me if you don't use Vim, is we can then sort of step along that using you know, W a few times to jump forward a few words. If I go back again, I could then say go right. I could use another way of, of moving to, to get up to that by going up to the first double quote or inverted comma, inverted quotes. Sorry, it's been a while since I've thought about that. Um, and so on and so forth, right? So you go forth, and then I could just change the word there. And I could put in something else, like maybe Apache. All right, so I can use the functionality and features of this particular editor, whatever it may be, to make moving around and editing the command much more feature-rich than it would normally be possible in the command line. Now, after you've done that, you just then save it, which as you can see here down the bottom, it saves it to a temporary file. And then we exit the editor. And now if I go back up in the command history, sometimes it's it is left directly, or sorry, it's printed directly to the terminal when you exit your editor. We can then just run that. Or did it just run that and I didn't realize it? Let's go ahead and let's, let's edit that command and f again and let's find out. So we'll go back up in the history. Command X, sorry, Control X, Control E. And now let's say that I don't want to have all the output that you saw. I just want to know which files contain the output um, that I'm looking for. So here we're going to use, I believe it's N, that will only show the files. It's either N or L. Bear with me if this is wrong. No, seems I got it wrong. So let's do that again one more time. And then we'll jump forward to N, change it to L close, save, close, and run. And then you can see it's changed the command and run, run it on the fly. Now, I would have expected that it would have just basically brought us back to here with the edited command. It didn't. I'll have to check into why in this particular user configuration it's not the case. But now, let's do that. Let's just sort of do one more little experiment of using that. Now we're going to jump up to the end. And now, what I want to do is I'll kind of expand this little sort of hello world-esque example into something a little bit more meaningful. So it kind of um, gives some greater emphasis as to why this is a good thing to do. So I'm going to pipe the commands through to sort. 
So that will then list all of the files in alphabetical order. And then we're going to pipe that through to unique. So that we'll get rid of any duplicates, should there have been any. I don't think there are with the L command, but bear with me. And then what I'm going to do... No, actually, no, no, we'll leave it there and we'll run that. So what I should then have is an alphabetical list, an alphabetical unique list of all the files where the string Apache appears. More specifically, all the ASCII.doc files in this project. Let's run that. And now, there we go. There we have a list of all the files. Um, so yeah, so that has been a hopefully very short video, just stepping through Control X, Control E, when you're working with commands in the command line or terminal to make editing and working with those commands much more efficient and much more effective. If you liked what you saw in the video, please give me a like, click the bell notification icon to know when more videos are coming out. I usually have them every Thursday. And I will see you in the next Software Development Cast with Matt. Till next time.